Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks so much for being here, for being subscribed if you are. And if you're not, go ahead and hit that button. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, hit that like button while you're at it. It's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. We just want to go ahead and brighten up the place. So let's get into this podversation slash reality chat. All right, guys, I know I have not really talked about 90 Day Fiance on my platform before. It is a show that I have watched over the years off and on and they've got 90 day fiance before the 90 days 90 day the other way i mean it's it's so much they're even having one coming up that's going to be 90 day the last resort so i guess it's going to be couples that have been on the show have had a rocky situation with their relationship and of course it's just another show but i guess it's going to be similar to the marriage boot camp show that's what i'm assuming and they haven't shown who's going to be on the show yet but i can only assume that angela the crazy blonde chick from georgia who got married to michael who is in i believe he's in nigeria in africa i mean oh my god that It was just absolutely crazy. But I mean, it's entertainment for us. I'm assuming these are these people's real lives. I My husband thinks that it's fake. And I'm not saying some of these people don't get on here and fake it. But I believe that a lot of these people, this is like their real life. They are really either that desperate to have a mate, female or male, because both do it. Males go over to other countries to find, quote unquote, love. And females do it too, just like the ones I just talked about, Angela. But anyway, yeah, there probably are some people that fake it. But listen, guys, there is this clip that's been making the rounds. And I actually watched it. And I I remember watching it. And my husband, he saw part of it too, because he can't stand the show. (laughs) He can't stand the show. But it's for me, it's entertainment. I, I don't really care. He, the guy, Michael... Not Michael, I'm sorry. I was just talking about Michael from Nigeria from a previous season. But the guy, his name is Riley. He's on this current season and he's dating this chick from Vietnam. Her name is Violet. And I know sometimes they say, oh, the guys, they always get with much younger females. And sometimes that is true. A lot of times, actually, that is true. But in this situation, she is not that much younger. He's 48 and she's 43. But Riley, he is a military vet. He has allegedly been scarred by betrayal in his past relationships. But after meeting and falling for his Vietnamese girlfriend, Violet, online, (laughs) he's ready to fly to Vietnam to give love another chance. But it hasn't been smooth sailing in the two years since they started talking. And Riley's concerns have led him to look into hiring a private investigator to determine if he can really trust Violet. And with issues from the onset, do these two stand a chance? Now, this is the write-up from TLC about the couple. Listen, this is absolutely ridiculous because before I play the audio of this clip that's been making the rounds... If you've been watching the show, you've seen it. But if you have not, I'm just going to fill you in. Riley, he comes across as the typical, and listen, take it how you want to take it. I'm not here to offend anybody. A hit dog will holler like they say. So if it doesn't apply to you, then let it fly. If it don't apply, let it fly. But he comes across as the typical black man in the States who wants to blame his failures in relationships on women and it's so tired it it really is I'm not going to go into this diatribe about all of that because I just really don't care but you know it's amazing to me how men like this will act as if there is nobody in the entire country I'm not saying they even have to be in the same city or town that you're in But they will act as if there is no other woman that looks like you, that has your same views, culture, raised similarly, whatever, in the country that you have to go to a whole other country to find love. It's absolutely ridiculous. So on the show, before he got 
his tired tail on a plane to fly all the way to Vietnam to see if this is really real. He was warned by his dad. His dad told him and showed him messages that Violet was sending to him. And he was shocked by it. He was really astonished. He couldn't believe it. I mean, he did believe it, but he was just like really astonished. Like, I can't believe that she's doing that. That's like betrayal. But yet you talk about you went to find love in another country by going online because you've been hurt by past betrayal and other relationships. No, it really sounds like you just have your radar off and you really don't know how to pick them. And you get involved in these situations that don't serve you. And then you want to blame the other person versus looking in the mirror. The man needs help. He needs therapy. And I don't know what his character traits are that might cause him to be called a narcissist or anything like that. I'm not saying he is because I don't know. But what I will say is a lot of these people they keep getting into these bad situations because they don't do any self-work. And so you can't feel sorry for people like this. His dad warned him. He chose to ignore it, even though he didn't like it. He chose to ignore it. And then his friend, who was a female friend, I don't know if she was biracial, but she looked like she was, um, probably more in terms of a biracial woman who was more on the African-American side. And then if she wasn't biracial, then she was just um, fairly light skin. Not that it matters, but she was warning him too, because when he started sharing things with her, she was like, that's a huge trust issue. Like she was trying to warn him. She didn't tell him don't go because ultimately he's a grown ass man and he's going to make his own decisions. But she was trying to warn him too on the way to the airport and he just chose to ignore. So again, He continued to ignore the people that he claims love him, that are actually in his life, that know him, to get on a plane, fly all the way over to Vietnam to see if this is really real. So it's just insane that when he gets over there, because there's more that they didn't play. Of course, they're just they just showed this clip. But when he gets over there, she was not extremely excited to see him like he thought that she should be they were in a store they were looking around at things she gets a text message on her phone and he said he saw a glimpse of it and it was a man with his shirt off and he demanded to see her phone and she was like no no you can't see my phone like I'm not I'm not showing you my phone and he was demanding to see her phone she refused to show it to him And he's just looking like a big gump, (laughs) a huge simp and, and, and talking to the camera about how, you know, he doesn't know if he can trust her. You're, you're still saying you don't know if you can trust her. Of course you can't trust her, but to be honest, it really doesn't matter because I feel that he thought that he could get this submissive, subservient woman over in Vietnam that was going to just bow down to him, be at his leisure. And that's what he really wanted. He didn't expect to get a woman in Vietnam (laughs) that was going to have her head on her shoulders, be headstrong, didn't really care what he had to say, didn't really care what he thought. She was going to do it how she wanted to do it. And it's making him look stupid. So now you've got this clip that's going around of him trying to explain how he feels some things that she said was disrespectful. And and listen, when I listened to it on the show, I was just like, do you think she really cares? She, She really doesn't. Because she ultimately knows that you want her. You will still marry her with all of those red flags, just waving, waving, waving in your face. And so why does it even matter? You know, she's going to get married. She's going to come to the U.S. eventually. She will eventually get her green card and get her citizenship. 
and then she's going to be done with you. You know, so (laughs) I'm going to play this clip and then, yeah. Last night we have, you know, which family, that's, um, uh, after that, um, my mom talked with me, um, she, she say, uh, you are jealous and want to control me. I'm not trying to control. I'm trying to understand what's going on. I mean. Let me talk first. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and uh, second, she say, um, you are um, I'm not uh, thoughtful. I'm not thoughtful. Yeah. When you come visit my home, you yeah. you don't don't buy a flower or uh, some chocolate for her. Very bad. It was very bad? Yeah, very okay. bad in Vietnam. Very bad. How am I supposed to? I don't know what your mother like. I don't know what's appropriate. But you have phone. You can ask me uh, before you uh, visit my home. Mm-hmm. That's a... Uh, I talk with mom, maybe he uh, forgot. All right, fair enough. And I, I feel horrible, but it's not my intention to disrespect you, your mother, your home, your, your, your country. I, that's not my intention. I do need to learn more about your culture. My question to you is, when are you going to learn about my culture? I'll give you an example. You call me fat and ugly in front of people. Yes. What? I say you are ugly, you are very bad. You really said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. In my culture, in America, that's rude, that's disrespectful, especially when a woman says that about the man that she's with. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes um, uh, I get in with um, my kid, uh, my friend, or oh, you are ugly, you ding ding kong kong. And we... In Vietnam, my culture is uh, not far um, uh, rude. But I don't know how is your country. And now it's, you it's, it's, with we, me. we could make, like, if we're alone and we're around family, we could make the jokes like that to each other. But in front of strangers, I'm a guest here. I am, I am, I seen one other person of my skin complexion here in the whole time I've been here. You're not accustomed to us. So when you say it, it sounds like it's a, it's an attack. Because we're not light or whatever it may be. I'm already a spectacle. I'm a black man in this country and they're already looking at me differently because I'm six foot four. I am dark. And when you say, oh, he's ugly, you start feeding the stereotype that if you're light skin, black, you're prettier versus dark skin, black. It's very uh, hurtful and disrespectful. People are already looking at me. How am I supposed to feel when you talk in your language and then you go, I say to her, you are ugly. I don't have any context. Listen, so you heard that, right? Now, (laughs) gaslighting can happen in any culture, any language, ethnicity, I'm quite sure. Because the fact that he sat there and thought that that she could say... Well, you know, I, I don't know that that's not okay in your culture. In any culture, I'm quite sure the words may be different, but saying someone is unattractive and that they're fat is not a compliment. And he knows that. He's just upset that she did it in public because he said it's okay if it's just you and I and you joke around like that. That's not even okay because that's not even something, if you're in a relationship with someone, I'm not saying that you may not poke fun sometimes if you, you know, see like a belly popping out for a moment and you, you know, call him Pillsbury Doughboy, just, you know, trying to make jokes every now and then. But to call someone fat and ugly, whether it is in private or in public, is extremely disrespectful. And so he's upset that she did it in public. And then she says to him, well, I don't know that that's not okay in your culture. And then he wants to talk about being dark skin. You know, you, he, he's probably, he strikes me as a type. He's probably one of those guys because he is darker skin. He doesn't want to be with a darker skin woman. So he feels 
it, it, it makes him feel better about himself, even though his skin isn't lightened up by being with someone who has lighter skin. It just makes him feel better about himself because he feels like, well, look, I'm usually talked about as being ugly. I, I may have been called burnt, crispy. You know, the, the phrase is just be honest that some people are made fun about about having darker skin especially as children. And that's something that he hasn't gotten through and gotten over as an adult because he never got therapy and help for those things. And so you feel that you are worthy now because you are able to link up with a lighter skinned woman. But this chick doesn't love you and you know it. And to be on this show that follows people who are going to be bringing someone to the United States on the 90-day K-1 visa to get married in 90 days. These people take so much advantage of that system that I believe was put in place legitimately at first, maybe, but it was really not meant for people to just find somebody online, you link up, and then you say, okay, we'll come to the States. But once you come to the States, if you want to stay, we're going to have to get married in 90 days or you're going to have to go back. It really is supposed to be people who are already in a relationship. You already know you're getting married and it just gives you that time period of three months to go ahead and get everything done. So for him to get upset with her, when she's just really being who she is and he couldn't take the time. You you know, going to these different cultures, especially in these Asian countries, that they have their customs and their traditions when it comes to family. I remember there was one season where it was a, actually it was a white guy who got married to a chick in Thailand and he couldn't afford the dowry. He had to get loans from friends to come up with the money to get the dowry, which I believe was like a cow and, and something else that he needed to get for the family. That was the dowry that was um, needed in order to marry this woman. And I believe they're still married because they actually do the 90 day pillow talk. I can't remember her name, uh, but it was a, um, a, a fat white guy. But anyway, I'm saying he knows that and he knows that this chick doesn't really she doesn't really like him. She's not going to respect him, but he's going to stick it out as long as he can. So he's just a fool. His dad tried to warn him. His friend on camera tried to warn him. Who knows who else tried to warn him that we did not see or hear about because he's just adamant about doing what he wants to do, even if it means making a fool out of himself on camera and this chick using him for what he does have. And I don't really know what all he has. He's a, he's a veteran, but I'm sure what he has is more than what she has. And I'm quite sure that she's not the, not she, but he's not the only one that she has been connecting with. And he saw proof of it on her phone when she got a text message that popped up with a guy with a shirt off. So he's just a fool. I don't feel sorry for him one bit, but I'm here for the entertaining. I'm I'm here for it. So you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much for being here, for liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until the next time, I just wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and I'm going to say bye.